no one would like to find someone else's in their marital bed. But imagine tucking yourself up with your husband for the night and seeing the ghost of your dead mother-in-law standing in the corner of the room. Well, this is what life is like for Jane Drew. Uh, she's been married to her husband, David, who works as a professional psychic for 30 years, so she's become quite accustomed to ghostly guests in the bedroom. Well, Jane is now sharing the details about their unusual household in her new book, The Psychic's Wife, Lifting the Veil, and she joins us now, along with her husband, David, to tell us more. And this is a fascinating story. Thank you both for joining us today. It's a to be on, thanks. It's our pleasure. So, David, your sort of um, psychic ability started from a very young age. When were you aware that something was going on for you? Well, I've been psychic all of my life from a, forever. My earliest experience, I remember, well, I suppose I'd be about three or two, two or three years of age in the bedroom and... Uh, when I was fast asleep, I would be woken up and a little girl used to jump up and say, boo, at the side of the bed. And uh, then she'd disappear. I'd lean over the bed to see where she was. And she'd jump up the other side of the bed and say, boo, again, this was good fun. Um, and that's when I was my earliest remember. I then remember I had a den down the bottom of the garden, like most little boys do. And uh, I used to go down there and play with what I now know were spirit children. There'd be one little boy with a bandage on his head and he'd say, uh, oh, I used to have really, really bad heads, but I'm OK now. Mm -hmm. And another little girl would say, oh, I used to have really bad tummy ache, but I'm OK now. Your mum thought he got imaginary friends. Yeah, well, I, I mean, it turned, yeah. it turned yeah. into yeah. a very successful career. I mean, this is your book. Uh, a psychic's uh, story. So there's there's two of them on the go now. Um, and so you did shows, um, and this is where you uh, you actually met Jane uh, in Blackpool, uh, who went uh, went along to see one of your shows in 1984. Uh, married uh, exactly a year later, um, and so uh, she was not surprised uh, about your life. But Jane, I, I can sort of understand. You think right? Okay, well that's your that's your connection with the spirit world. Everything is fine there. But when it impacts on you, and it's not your career, and it's not something you've had forever, how did that make you feel? What was the first time? The first time was very, very early on, really. And um, we were sitting in the lounge watching TV, and um, David shouted something, I can't remember the remark now, but just something jokey to, to one of his spirit helpers. And all the knives and forks in the drawer in the kitchen started rattling. And that was the first time, and that's when I thought, oh, hello, this is going to be quite a ride. I'm going to stick with this guy. <laughs> so you've sort of, over the years, you adjust to that energy being around you and it becomes more familiar yes. and, I guess, less scary. I guess with this story... It's, it's why all that it's, exactly. But the reason why this is brought to our attention today is the idea that spirits sort of come around more at night because that's when the energy is bright and it's much more peaceful, so they sort of come about. But this means that they are coming into your bedroom and some of them are strangers and some of them you know well some the thing is when you when you're about to go to sleep or you're about to wake up you're at your most relaxed so that's when really you're more able to pick up that they're there it may be that they were there before but you were just not relaxed enough to to be aware of them uh, I remember the first time I saw Jane's mum at the bottom of the bed uh, <laughs> she's only been passed over a couple of years now and uh, it'd be a few months ago, I saw her stood at the bottom of the bed. Well, I always said she'd got a face that could haunt houses. But <laughs> I'm joking, she was, she was a no, lo they were... lovely, lovely lady. She no, really got, was. They got on really well. This is a dynamic that they had. Okay, but, uh, Otherwise, you're a very brave man. I... <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, this is Mary, who sadly died in 2019. She's 89 years old. Uh, your mum, David Joan, passed away in 19... 79 um and so with with you jane w when you see your mother-in-law your dead mother-in-law uh, in in the bedroom is this a a physical form i don't now i don't actually see her what i do is i feel her bouncing on the bed um which is a peculiar thing for a mother-in-law alive or dead to do 
Uh, I guess so, yes. It's, she's just visiting him, I guess, you know, and sits on the side of the bed when we're in bed and uh, gives a couple of bounces to let me know that it's her. Why doesn't, because, she, I mean, David, why, why doesn't she visit you in the kitchen? Well, she probably does. It's just that I can't see her there. It's just when you're relaxed and going to sleep that you're more susceptible. So she quite possibly does. <laughs> now, I'm going to ask the question that a lot of people are thinking here, which is... The last thing that they would want if they were being intimate with a loved one is for their mother-in-law, <laughs> dead or alive, to be anywhere near the bedroom. Um, what happens yeah. in that situation? Are you left well alone? Do they, do they, do they know? <laughs> yes. I mean, it can be a bit of a mood killer, but just as, like, if you went into your son's room and caught him in a personal circumstance, you'd be the first one to turn around and get out of there. It's this, exactly the same if someone's in spirit. You don't want to be there any more than they want you there. So they just step back as if, as if step into a curtain, like into a different dimension, and think this is something for another time. <laughs> I'll be back in a couple of minutes. If if you if you obviously by saying sort of things like this, um, there is an element of scepticism um, and uh, and we've met many people here who they found it very calming spiritually to have this contact with with the other side mm. um, and uh, and so for you David you know you say if you sense you have this as a gift then then don't hide it I'm sorry what was that oh that was a long question to don't repeat again do you do you do you, you, can... you um, do you suggest that people who have what you have uh, say out loud, do you know what, I think I'm in contact with the spirit world? Well, I think if anyone um, has a psychic ability, then they should use it. I think everyone has various uh, God-given gifts. Uh, some people are very good footballers, some people are very good musicians, some people are very good artists, but all given various gifts and they're there to be used. And if you're psychic, you, then you should use, develop to the best of your ability and use your psychic gifts to help other people. Mm. Are they all friendly? Are all ghosts friendly? Well, no. Everyone lives, everyone passes over from this life into the next. Life is eternal for everyone. Death doesn't make uh, a fool into a wise man or... or you know, a, a sinner into a saint. You're still the same person when you pass over. So, you know, as there are some very funny people in this world, so there are some awkward people in the next world. When we pass over to spirit, we do not all go to the same place. It very much depends on how you live this earthly life as to where you will go to in the spirit world. But your mother-in-law <laughs> came to your bedroom. <laughs> yeah, she comes to visit from time to time. Um, but then again, you know, when we lose someone, we lose the the physical person, and that is upsetting. We can grieve the loss of a loved one. But if we have the knowledge that they are living on in another world, then that that's nice to know. Mm, yeah. And if my mother comes to visit, or indeed my mother-in-law comes to visit, or indeed if anyone comes to visit. Mm. Most of the time we find here at home, when you are at your most relaxed, which is when you get into bed, or sometimes when you're first waking up in the morning, that's when you're more and more aware of okay. spirits. Uh, they can show themselves, they can sometimes say, they hold my hand. If I've got my arm out of bed, I feel someone holding my hand. And that could be comforting. Yeah, yeah sure? I, can yeah. I can imagine. It's I can fascinating. Imagine. It really is. Uh, we've got the book. Uh, here it is. This is Jane's book. Uh, and this is uh, Lifting the Veil. And thank you very much thank indeed. Thank you both. Talk to you to both. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thanks for talking to us. Pleasure. Nice to see you. Bye. 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 B